All righty. Um, well, hello, everyone. My name's Mariah. Um, Maya asked me to join um, you all today to do a resume workshop. Um, we talked about this probably a month ago and just the opportunity to um, better define who we are from a, a career um, career search experience, right? So it all starts with your resume. Um, I've been in human resources for a little over a decade. Um, and one of the, the areas that I've had involvement has been in acquisition and early career talent. So I am going to go through just from my perspective um, and from other um, just knowledge around how you want to write a resume, what the objective of your resume is, what to focus on. Um, since there's only three of us, um, let's go ahead and I like the fact that you guys are off camera. This can be as interactive as possible. So don't hesitate to ask questions um, and stop me at any time. So again, Mariah, I work for Thermo Fisher. I am a human resource leader. I've been with the organization for over a year. And like I said, I've spent over um, 10 years in human resources. So we'll go through, let's just do a quick introduction, maybe Kalu and um, Jack, Jackie, so you could introduce yourself. My name yeah, is, is uh, oh, really. My bad. Um, <laughs> my name is Jacquez Jackson. Uh, I go to Kansas City Art Institute, majoring in graphic design. Um, yeah, that's about it. Nice to meet you. Nice to meet you, too. Hi, everyone. My name is Blessing. Where are you at school? What are you studying? I'm out of school. Oh, okay. So what are you what are you doing now? I work for a startup in St. Louis. Okay. And when did you graduate? Um, I graduated from Mizzou in 2018. Okay. Sorry, blessing. I called you by your last name. So <laughs> I apologize. Okay. Um, nice to meet you. Nice to meet you. So I wanted to focus a little bit of time on understanding the basics. So how, so, so what do I mean by that way? Right? And what are resume basics? So your resume is your formal document that provides an overview of your professional qualifications that include your work experience, your education, your skills, and your accomplishments. So then what is the purpose of your resume? And the primary purpose of your resume should be to secure an interview by showcasing your qualifications, your, your suitability for a job, and it serves as the marketing tool. So how do you present yourself to potential employers and the best that you could be the best possible fit in the best possible light? So a well-crafted resume is going to highlight your strengths and achievements um, it's going to make it easier for hiring managers to see how you can add value to the organization. And then what are like what what are the key components of a resume, right? So like what is it that a hiring manager, what is it that acquisition, what is it that HR, what are they looking for, right? So you're gonna want to list um from a in I kind of like to look at this, what is the chronological functions? of a resume and how should that resume um, read, right? So if you look at a chronological resume, and I think that this is super important, you want to list your work experience in a reverse chrono chronological order. So where are you at presently and working your way back to when you potentially started your careers, right? Um, you also want to highlight your relevant skills and accomplishments, making it ideal to, um, to highlight those transferable skills. And then you want to focus on, you know, your education, right? So if you're, if you're recently out of school, you're going, from my perspective, the, the, exp the education should go before, um, this, the experience. And then, the summary and objectives should go 
within that area as well. And so we'll go over that here in a, in a little bit, just like what that what that chronological order should look like. Um, <clears throat> so some of the advantages of highlighting your work experience is it shows a steady work history, right? And it clearly demonstrates your career growth and consistency at an employer. When you're focusing on your skills and experience, those can be bullet points, but it's best for also illustrating career changes, right? So maybe you started out in a certain field. I started out in retail. I actually started out selling clothes, um, but then I also went into sales and now I'm in human resources. So when you articulate those skills, you want to make your employer aware you have you have skills in customer service. You have skills in sales. You also have skills in human resource leadership. Make sense? Um, so I kind of took this, this component from LinkedIn. I think LinkedIn is a very um, strong resume writing tool. Um, but how you want to section your resume. So I'll spend a little time on this and then I will share um, a resume with you all, just a template that most employers prefer. Um, it's Thermo Fisher's preferred template. Um, it was my preferred template that we, we would prefer at my previous employer. So what I've just seen with experience. Um, and then we can talk about later on when you might be in fields of marketing or um, Jacquez, did you say that you were in um, design? Did I hear you say that? Yeah, graphic design. Graphic design. So your resume might look a little bit different from someone that's, you know, pursuing a career in business, right? You might articulate in your resume some of that graphic design and those skills. Incoming call. Um, so... But the components of your resume, right, the chronicle, the chronological form, the sections, those should really stay the same. Um, so you want to have your contact information, okay? I'm going to go ahead and share a resume with you guys. Let me know when you can see this. Well, I'm going to have to stop sharing and then I'm going to have to reshare. Just a minute, guys. Can you guys see this? No, not yet. Okay. No, I can see it. Okay, awesome. So when you're highlighting the key sections of a resume, you want to focus on your contact information that needs to be top, right? So the content of your contact information, obviously your full name, okay, first and last name, not a nickname, first and last name, your phone number, your email address. If you're in school, you should probably use your school email. If you have a personal email, it should probably be a professional personal email. Um, and your LinkedIn profile link and other links that showcase your professional background. So again, graphic design, you might, you might have some links that you could share to showcase your work and you can include those links in the top of your resume. Okay. So by guess, um, Blessing and Jacquees, do you, can you guys tell me um, how many seconds do you think somebody has to spend on your resume or that they're even willing to? Maybe 15, 30. Yeah, maybe 10, 15 tops. Yeah, you guys are spot on. Okay. Yeah, so I would say no more than 30 seconds. That's got to be your mindset, right? To like, if you've got your if you've got a link to your portfolio that's on there, amazing. Because honestly, if I'm an HR leader and I'm looking at that, I'm like, let's cut straight to his work, right? Because we want to see if we're going to hire him. Like, what is it that he's capable of? So certain links like that, or if I'm hiring somebody into, you know, some sort of um, marketing role, I might go look at your LinkedIn profile, right? I might even take a minute away from your resume to go look at, you know, what tell what is going to tell me more of a story about this person? 
Okay. <clears throat> so then you'll go into the objective. Have you guys heard of having the objective right below your name and your contact information? Okay. All right. So this is a really important component for both of your, your majors. Where you see technical skills, that's going to be for more of your, your STEM students, research, biology, chemistry, science, like some of those, the more um, specialized roles, finance, getting into more of those technical skills, that can be intertwined with more of the field that you're in, whether you're going to do demonstrate and display more of the technical skills below your, your name or if you're gonna share your objective. So the objective should be a brief statement at the beginning of the resume that outlines your career goals and key qualifications. So I'm gonna put one of you, one or two of you on the spot here today. If I asked you, let's say that you're applying for your next dream job, and I asked you, you know, what is your objective today? Could either of you give me a 10 to 15 seconds, two to three sentences of what your objective is? Um, can I ask you a question about that? Yeah, of course. So where it says the technical skills slash the, <clears throat> if it will say either or? Either or. Yes, I'm sorry. Yeah, so, good question. So okay. for you and your background, I would recommend that you have objective. Like you should give an objective, right? So can you kind of give examples of, a, of, of, of an objective, please? Yeah, like, so... Uh, so it just gives a snapshot of who you are, right? Mm -hmm. So without a lot of guidance, right? Let's just kind of try to take a stab at it real quick, right? So like if I'm asking you, who who are you, right? Just like you gave me that introduction, it, it gives me, it, it helps capture your employer's attention, okay, right? And why you might be a good fit. But it's still in the form of bullet points. no. Two oh, okay. to three sentences. So for the purpose of this example, Blessing, I said technical slash. So it should be technical or really okay. um, based on background or experience. If you're going to be, if you, if your background is more technical, you're mm -hmm. going to list bullet points, right? If you're a human resource leader, I'll give you, how about I give you an example of me, right? As a human resource leader, I'm going to share two to three sentences that, you know, I've been in human resource human resources for over 10 years. I um, support multiple functions of up to over 5,000 employees. Um, I have experience in labor relations, acquisitions, core design, change management. All, and I might just give a little sentence like that, right? So to put you guys on the spot, right? And to kind of catch you off guard, if you were to think about you write in when you would write your resume, right? And I ask you, what? Give me a summary objective. What might be a response? Um, I would just highlight. Um, I would highlight what I do and what I do well, like, for example, huh? Yep, love it. And I would just put that in two to three sentences, maybe three sentences. So with that, with those objective sentence, sentences, mm -hmm. I would say I, I, say I mm -hmm. demonstrated, I demonstrate leadership by X, Y, and Z. I was the manager of a 10 person team that, um, uh, I oversaw, quality control, like stuff like that. Perfect. Okay. Yep. Yeah, I can go next. Um, I would say like, if I was to have like a sentence off the, well, a few sentences off the top of my head, I would be like, uh, born and raised in Kansas City, uh, graphic design and creative direction is my specialty, but I work with all sorts of mediums. I like, I work with, Photoshop, uh, Adobe Illustrator, and InDesign, and I like to turn ideas into reality. Awesome. That was great. <clears throat> so you captured a little bit of who you are. 
you talked about what you could bring to the table and you highlighted some of your career school highlights. So great. And then, um, sorry, just to hop in, Patrick is also an alum. I don't know if you can see him on your screen. He has his camera off, but he's also an alum if he, if he wanted to contribute to the combo. <laughs> Yeah. Hey, can you can you hear me? Yes. Yes. Hey, everybody. I'm yeah. I'm sorry. I'm just pretty sick right now, so I'm kind of a mess. But thank you for having me. Yeah. Thanks for being here. Sorry to hear that. Um, I think Maya was just saying, if you want to jump in, feel free. So feel free, Patrick, if you're feeling well enough to jump in, please do. Um, so just making this more of an interactive discussion. Um with the number of us that are on here, I think it will just flow um, a little bit more seamlessly. So then we'll go to our experience, right? So these are some of the things that aren't gonna change. The, chronolo the chronological order of your resume is not going to change. Um, and it, you don't have to follow this order. However, in order for me, I think um, to capture the attention of hiring managers, this order is something that is preferred. So then you'll go into the experience and this details your work history, including job titles, company names, dates of employment, and key responsibilities and achievements. Why is this important? It demonstrates your relevant experience and accomplishments, and it shows you have applied your skills in real world situations. I want to highlight the importance of your experience in your resume. So when you're in that employment history, this is a very important component. Does anyone you want to take a stab out stab at why? I would say experience is everything. Uh, showing that you've worked in that sort of field before, or have like some sort of relation to what you're going to do in the next job, bring in there. They at least know that you have had experience and can offer something to the table that. Many other recruits are people that they're hiring don't have. Excellent. You're spot on. Um, so all of those things, right? You are demonstrating your skill set. You're highlighting what it, you've done, your key responsibilities, your achievements, and the history, your career experience. When you're applying to a job, after you receive a job offer, you, offer, you go through that process. There's something called the background check. Your background check is going to confirm your career history and your career experience, okay? So having this correct, having the work that the places that you work, the key dates that you've worked there and ensuring that that is accurate is a key component to, to your resume. If those things aren't relevant, then they go to someone like me who reviews them and says, hmm, is this an integrity issue with someone that doesn't know their their the dates that they worked at an employer? Are they intentionally leaving things out? And it could essentially prevent you from getting a job. So the reason that I share that little story with you guys today is because just last week we had a situation like that happen where there was an account rep in accounting applying for a job and her, the dates that she was with a current employer were inaccurate from what she listed on her resume. The time that she had left was inaccurate and the current company that she was working for was inaccurate. So if you were me, would you say that that's a mistake or would you say that that was an integrity issue? Integrity from this standpoint. Correct. So ensure that you have those dates accurate. Now, mistakes do happen, right? So if it was one where you've got like a month here and there, that's not a big deal. It will get flagged, but that's not a huge deal. But the repetitiveness of those errors could cost you essentially a job. Okay. So when you're going through, you want to make your resume as accurate and detailed oriented as possible, ensuring that you have the correct dates of employment, ensuring that you're highlighting the correct work history, because let's get in there and say, 
you know, um, I say that I'm in graphic design and I share a portfolio that's not mine, right? And then I get the job. And now I'm expected to do this job and I got the job based on a portfolio that wasn't mine. Do you think that employer could then come back and say, hey, you falsified your resume? Yeah, so it's not worth it, right? Um, okay, so we'll, we'll move on to the next piece. Can I ask you a quick question about that part? Of course, you can ask any question. So the employment history, where it has the bullet points, where it says add job description in bulleted form, about how many bullets would you like us to keep it to? Yeah, that's a good question. Yeah. Um, so um, in, what would you say? Because you uh, already answered the question earlier when you said, <clears throat> how many seconds do you have, right? So yeah. you got to think about that too. What would you say? So I was thinking maybe like three, but does three not look like you didn't do a lot, you know, as far as yeah. like, yeah. does it look like, oh, she only did yeah. three things. So we'll get into this piece a little bit later in the presentation. Blessing, I think that that's a great call out and a great question. Um, and how you can ensure that you're highlighting the most important things that the job seeker is going to be looking for. I'm sorry, that the job um, the employer is going to be looking for um, and what the hiring manager is going to look for. But I would stick to like no more than five or six. Okay. And if you do go into more of those details based on a certain work experience, um, and a certain work that a certain, um, I'm sorry, a certain employer that you might have spent more time at that has more relevant work experience. We'll talk about that here in a couple minutes. You're going to want to make sure that you might cut from other places. Okay. 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 Thank you. Yeah. Thank you. <clears throat> Excuse me. Um, and then you'll go into skills certifications. Um, there might be some certifications that you can get in graphic de design. Am I correct on that? Yeah, some you can, not all the way, but like there are some certificates you could get, but they're yeah. not required. Yeah. And if you, and that's okay, but that highlights expertise, right? And so those certifications, you're going to want to highlight in the skills section. And then if you're currently in school, you might highlight some of the student org involvement. Okay. You guys still seeing my screen okay? Mm -hmm. Okay. So we're going to go on to the next slide here. And the next slide is going to be crafting your resume okay so when you're really in that building phase okay we've already got the co contact information remember you're ensuring accuracy and professionalism your summary or objective if you're in more of that technical role um, or background then you're going to have those technical skills listed you're going to highlight the experience use action words, quantify achievements, and tailor the job description. So that's the point that I wanted to get back to, Blessing, that you called out. Um, how many bullet points should I use or how long should that be? Use the job description as a, as a baseline, right? So I will tell job seekers, you need to ensure that for the jobs that you are applying to, you are aligning your resume with the job description. And so this is a big miss for a lot of um, candidates, right? You might be applying to a role that is heavier on analytics and data. And so the expectation would be that you tailor some of your work experience to call out those achievements that you've had or the work that you've completed in data and analytics. And that's where you might spend more time. Because for this role that you're applying to, you need to demonstrate that you have that capability and that you have that experience and that you're able to complete that type of work. Make sense? Um, and then education, again, for you all recently um, graduated, still in school, the education piece needs to be on top. Honors needs to be highlighted. Certifications that you're obtaining or received needs to be included. And if your GPA is above a 3.3 or 4, I would include that as well. 
I'm not opposed to 3.0 or above. So I hear some people say 3.3, but I, if it's a 3.0 or above, I would highlight it. Um, but that is a key component as well. Okay. What questions? Oh, uh, quick question too. Uh, same question as Bus and have for me. Well, mine sort of followed under technical skills or like objectives. I'm a little confused on where like my skills will lie. Yeah. So, um, I'd probably make the recommendation for you that you're under. Uh, ooh. kind of both right because I liked the overview that you had but what so I think for you write out what your technical skills are and also write an objective summary you could go either way but if you have more skills to highlight your skills could go below that work experience so you could still have that objective summary at the top your experience and your skills could be right below that that could be an option for you um But that would be my recommendation. Either you could really go either way. I would say for you as well, make sure that you have a portfolio link. That's going to be huge. If you don't, probably the majority of your competition is going to have a, a a portfolio link. Do you have one? Not set up yet, but I've been working with my job because I work at Locked In. under an internship there and my mentor there is helping me build a website to showcase Perfect. all work. Perfect. That's going to be excellent for you to have on your resume. Okay. So let's talk just a little bit about um, tailoring and optimization. So the importance of tailoring resumes for specific job applications. Okay. So tailoring your resume for a specific job application ensures that your qualifications And your experiences are directly aligned with the requirements of the job. This makes it easier for hiring managers to see if you're a good fit. Okay. So analyze the job description. We just talked about that. You should be carefully reading the job posting to understand the key qualifications, skills, and experience the employer is seeking. You need to highlight relevant experience. So adjust the order and content of your experience section to emphasize the most relevant roles and experience. So a blessing, that's what you and I were just talking about, right? Depending upon the role that you are pursuing, this is where you are going to tailor and make adjustments, where you might have more experience in a certain category for a current job that you're going for, and you might utilize additional key career um, achievements in that area where you might not have to call out and highlight in other roles that you've had. Does that make sense? Yeah. So basically, okay. when yeah. the job, what I always would do is read the job description and okay. if it's something that I want to do or something that I think I can do, I would try to use words and phrases that the description used as like, as far Excellent. as like, my skills so like if it's like um they're looking for someone to like let's say uh manage in a high paced setting something like that I'll say like has experience managing in a high paced setting like almost mm -hmm. the same like words that they use mm -hmm. yeah no that's great I I'm I'm right there with you I would do the same thing Um, use specific language. So this is where for graphic design, you're going to want to pay attention to this. Incorporate the terminology and phrases from the job description to reflect your alignment. Um, so again, that's what Blessing just indicated, but it reflects your alignment with the job requirement. So if they're looking for a certain skill set in web design, you need to make sure that you're utilizing those words. You have specific experience doing this. And what does that mean? What does that look like? Where can they refer to see that experience showcased on your portfolio? Review, re refer to section blah, 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 blah to see. <clears throat> um, hey, Mariah, it's still showing us the, the resume. If you switch screens. Oh, darn it, I did. I was like, oh, this is great. But I was like, I hope she's not reading from her, her thing. <laughs> Mm 
Yep, because we're on a new slide now. Okay, so we just went through tailoring. Can you guys see that? Yep. Yes. Okay, so now we're talking about tailoring and optimization. Here's the slide for that, right? You see the tailor over there figuring out how to get it done, tweak it. Um, so techniques for key optimization. So now kind of talking about that optimization to pass applicant tracking system. Does anybody know on this call what applicant tracking system is? Anybody? Okay, does anybody- Can you repeat that question, please? Yeah, tell, can you tell me what an applicant tracking system is? Is it kind of like a, a portal? Like when jobs will make you create a portal and you will okay. send um, your application there and get updates via that? Is that what that is? Not quite, but definitely appreciate the guess. Anybody else? Okay, so an applicant tracking system is a CRM, is a C, is a, um, a tool, customer relationship management. Those are tools that we use in, in the workforce to track people, really. Um, and an applicant tracking system is used by many employers to filter and rank resumes based on specific criteria before the human ever sees them. Right. So blessing, you had that first step, right? Right. You're uploading your resume, you're putting it into the portal, your applicant. And now for some roles and especially in graphic design, right? Roles at Thermal Fisher, we might, we might get thousands of applications. Truly. I've seen, I had a role that was posted and I think I saw 3,500 applicants. Well, what, recruiter has time to go through 3,500 applications. It's not possible, right? Right. So the applicant tracking system is going to scan your resume for specific criteria before it ever gets to somebody like me. Okay. And what they're looking for are keywords. So I know that graphic design, there's a lot of, there's a lot of terminology that's used you're going to want to ensure that you're highlighting those keywords for the job that you're applying for, because once your resume gets put into that applicant tracking system, it's going to skim and search for that. And if you don't have that, then, you know, your resume is going to, your application is going to, you know, go to an, the, the next, you know, how that works. So the functionality, um, Applicant tracking system scans resumes and relevant keywords and phrases, categorizing and ranking them based on how well they are matched to the job description. So then the next phase of that is, so you've applied to a job, you've now been screened by the applicant tracking system. It's pulling that, they're saying, okay, this might be a good match. And then they're gonna go and categorize based on what your key highlights are and give you a score. So for our candidates, they get a score next to them. And that score is going to tell the recruiter, based on what their resume entails, that this would be a good person to reach out to, or mm, maybe this is going to be somebody that we regret for the job. So it is okay to incorporate key words and phrases from the job description into your resume. Pay close attention to skills and qualifications and job titles mentioned. However, ensure that in this process, you're not utilizing keywords and skills that you don't have, right? It should only be areas of experience. Include variation. So use different forms of the same word, right? Do you guys understand what that is? So I led projects, leadership, right? What are the synonyms that you can utilize to demonstrate your um your expertise. You're also going to want to make sure that you avoid overloading, right? So ensuring that the keywords are naturally integrated into your resume. And this is where I would tell you over and over, utilize your career services center. Go to your advisor, seek help, and, and ask them for 
examples of, you know, how does this sound? Am I overloading words here? I don't want it to be forced. I don't want it to look like I just copied and pasted the job description either, because that's definitely not going to be good. And then for me, I think use standard headings. Now for graphic design, they might want you to be a little bit more creative, but in business, you're going to want to focus in education. You need to focus on your experience, the skills, the education, and the qualifications. That is going to help you um, get past essentially the applicant tracking systems. <clears throat> So when you are incorporating these relevant concepts into your resume, you've analyzed the job descriptions, you've identified the key requirements of the role. So we shouldn't be applying to jobs without understanding the key requirements and the responsibility of the job. Because let's say you make it all the way past that resume step and you get a job offer, you're, take, you're definitely not going to want to walk in there not understanding what the key requirements are. So weed that out in the beginning and then focus on, once you've, once you've um, completed those steps, focus on the core competencies of the role, the qualifications, the requirements. Okay, so um, just want to highlight a couple more things and then we'll save some time for some questions here. So it's important to understand that first and your first impression is essentially your resume, right? That's your brand. Um, a resume needs to be free of errors. The one thing we don't want to do is make a poor first impression based on our resume. I've seen resumes that are extremely busy. I've seen them that are forced. I've seen them that are overloaded. Unfortunately, that person might be the best person for the job, but as an employer, we've got to make a decision and there are things that we're looking for, for the people that we're hiring. So you've got to learn in instances like that, how do you style flex? How do you shift so that you can get your foot in the door? A polished resume reflects professionalism and a high standard of work. So when the resume is free of errors, when it's organized, when it's in the chronological form, when it's highlighting your key achievements and skills, that demonstrates professionalism and high standards, that you're taking the time to analyze a job, a job description, to identify those key components of the role, incorporate those into your resume, that's what's getting you, um, you know, past some of those initial stages. So after you've taken a stab at your resume, make sure that you spend some time soliciting feedback from peers, mentors, career services, university academy leaders, okay? Um, ensure that you take the time to read it out loud because essentially your elevator pitch and your interview, everybody on this call knows what an elevator pitch is. What is it? Sort of how you go about uh, talking to people and introducing yourself and having that sort of image that you want to present yourself as pre-ready, ready to go whenever you talk to somebody. Perfect, got it. Um, spot on. So this that's going to tee up your elevator pitch. Make sure you spell check. Print out multiple copies, guys. Shouldn't be going to career fairs without at least five to six copies of your resume. Worst thing is to come up to my career fair table and tell me you don't have a copy of your resume. I know that we're we're in different times. You got the QR codes, you got all this, but it's nothing like just being proactive and prepared. And also ensure consistency. Um, okay. I 
have some links in here that I'm going to put in the chat. And it is going to be resume templates. You do have to purchase these um, resume templates if you if you're interested in them. Um, just a second. Actually, I will email them to Maya because they're not going in here um, with the link. So I'll email these to Maya and she can get these sent out to you guys. And I also put in here um, how to get your resume noticed by employers. So just some suggestions there. Um, and I will send that to Maya. What questions do you guys have? I have a question about the template that you um, were talking to us about. Okay. On, um, I think it was at the top of it. Yeah. Right before, well, I guess kind of still more about like the objectives in the, um, what was the other option? Skill, technical skills things. Yeah. Did you put both on there? Yeah, you you could. And that's kind of what I was explaining to um, Patrick. Jack Cleese. Yeah. So I was explaining that you could have the summary objective right below the education, right? Give your little two to three sentences. And then you could have your skills and your technical skills go right below the employment history. I mean, so when it comes to your um, resume, still one page, a one pager. You know, I'm open as so long as you're capturing important key responsibilities, employment history and experience. Obviously, oh, did we lose her? Um, obviously, Maya, maybe you can fill her in or she might be able to join. Obviously, um, you don't want to... Um, just make it long for the sake of being long. Like someone that's in college, fresh out of school, one page. My resume with over a decade of experience is still only two pages. Like you've got to figure out like what's important and what's going to get you the job, right? Having just an overloaded forced resume with a bunch of miscellaneous is not it. Having a long resume does not demonstrate any more better skills than having one that is more concise. Quite frankly, again, to answer her question, right? Um, if you are only going to get really 30 seconds max for somebody to review your resume, you got to kind of think about, do they have time to scroll through multiple pages or should I, you know, trim this down and get to the point? I have a question uh, based on, on that. Um, okay. And first of all, uh, Mariah, thanks for your time. And Maya, thanks for setting this up. Um, oh, blessings back. Let me let her. Uh... So, blessing, are you there? We lost you for a minute. <laughs> I'm so sorry. <laughs> no, you're okay. I, I don't know. Everything just have... shut off, but. <laughs> That's okay. I went ahead and um, finished explaining your question. So it depends, right? Like, mm -hmm. is it longer than one page because it has purpose or is it longer just to be longer, right? Again, you have to think about, I only really have 30 seconds that someone's going to spend looking at this. I need to capture their attention and get on with it. So just be mindful. And I feel like that's, that is going to come in from having like that peer review, right? Or having somebody review your resume that can give you a little bit of feedback. Okay. This may not be as necessary. Okay. Thank you. I appreciate that. Yep. Uh, I have a question. So spe okay. specifically for like me, uh, having that portfolio, like you were saying, and the order that it should be, where should I put that portfolio link or that portfolio uh -huh. Yep, I'm actually sending Maya this template. Um, again, I've actually sent it to you already, Maya, but just make sure that they get a copy of it. Um, 
it needs to go in that first header, right? So you've got your name, you've got your phone number, you've got your email, you've got your location. Then right below that, I would have a link to your LinkedIn profile and a link to your portfolio. Gotcha. Because I kind of hinted, but if I were in your field, I'd probably be clicking right on your link to your portfolio pretty quickly. <laughs> <laughs> um. Okay, what else? Patrick, you were going to ask a question. Yeah, so, and I have I have a lot of questions. It's hard to know which one to ask. But um, what I think I have a strength in, like, diversity of, of my work. Like, I've worked in many different or several different industries. Uh, and, like, the fact that, like, I, I waited tables for five years isn't necessarily what I'm doing now. But I still, it's still important to me. Um, so, like... Yeah, how do you know what to omit, what to include? What are your thoughts? Okay, that's a good question. It depends. So remember how we talked about study studying and analyzing the job description. You can highlight your customer service experience and your skills. Right? So customer service experience is going to come from waiting tables for five years. But if you've got a degree in electrical engineering, um, you're not the 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 time that you spent at waiting tables is not going to make a bit of a difference if I'm hiring you to be an electrical engineer. But it would be nice to know that you have the skills to be in customer service because you're going to be helping people. Does that make sense? Sure. So I think analyzing and paying attention to what the what is the job that I'm applying for and what's going to help me land a job interview. My, I don't know if you have any context that you want to add, but. <clears throat> yeah, I would say just echo the same thing. Just like figuring out like what, which of those things is the most relevant. Like if, if it's not relevant to the current job that you're like applying for, then I would say to either leave it off or try to mention it in some other way. Same thing. Something that that's oh yeah, bless you, I'm sorry. I, I was just going to say, I, I had a question like that before at something else like this. And their kind of advice was, although it is a part of your work history, like um, they said, like, do the most relevant stuff. And sometimes you can bring up stuff like that if you do get to the interview part. Yeah, to kind of tell like, the interview. Yeah. Your, um, you know, that you've done other things or make it applicable to like the current position. But I kind of had a similar question. They said the same thing. Patrick, does that help answer your question? It does, but I'm, you know, I found that I'm almost like making a new resume for each job I'm applying for, and it gets a little, it's taxing. Okay, so Patrick, what is your what is your background in, and what are you applying for? Um, so I have five to ten years of um, hospitality service, and then marketing and creative, and then uh, five years of. Uh, labor organizing and negotiating. So uh, I don't honestly. I'm looking for for roles that take advantage of of all the stuff that I. Okay, that and I, what's your degree in? I have a degree in English and a graduate degree in uh, film and linguistics. Okay, if you want to send me your resume, I'd, I'd I'd take a look at it. I don't know how quickly I can get to it, but I I could skim it and take a look at it. I sent Maya some um, stuff over as well, so you can take a look at that. You shouldn't be redoing it for every job you're applying to. What what jobs do you are you applying to right now? Um, a lot of the ones that like nonprofits and things okay, like that. Okay, so competitive industry to get into. Um, um, and I appreciate the offer. I'll maybe I'll send you the resume I make after this meeting. Yeah, by all means. Mm hmm. It is, um, you know, applying to a job is a full-time job. Interviewing is a full-time job. And you're, I'd, I'd be lying if I said it's not taxing, Patrick, because it is, right? It is, a, it, it's kind of annoying, right? It's like, why do I have to change this? And, you know, let me get an interview. But when you um, are on the other end of that, You've got limited resources, right? You've got recruiters and acquisition that they've got to rely on those um, applicant tracking systems. 
And sometimes because of that, that weeds people out that might be overqualified for a job or the best person for the job based on the um, the formula that the applicant tracker has been set up to skim, scan resumes for. So that being said, have you seen any resumes get through that were like unorthodox or like a little weird? Mm -mm. No, not unless you came through like a referral. Gotcha. But you can also look for, so some, some, some teams, right, they'll have a system where it's like still share all applicants for the job. Um, so they could see it that way. It depends on like what the, um, I can't think of the word, but it's just how we have the requisition set up. Alrighty guys, well it's, well, it's four o'clock. <clears throat> I appreciate you guys taking the time to um, invest in your career in your next steps. I think this is super important. Um, understanding, you know, how to land a job, your resume, all these things can be, in Patrick's, Patrick's words, quite taxing, annoying. And just by you spending this hour today, I hope it was meaningful for you. I hope you got some good takeaways. Um, and I truly hope that you, um, land your your dream job wh whenever that is and if i could be of any resource or assistance um maya has my contact information i'm happy to connect i'm happy to review a resume um all of those things thank you very much you're welcome yeah and then i'll i'll send out um the link that mariah sent and then i do have the copy of the template she sent as well so i'll send that and attach that to the email too thank and, you so um, much. yeah so thank y'all for coming Thank you. Nice meeting you all. Thank you, Mariah. Thank you for sending up this Thanks. meeting, Maya. Have yeah, a good sure. one. Bye. Bye. Thank Bye, everybody. Bye-bye.